What's up guys, Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler and I'm really excited today because I'm going to be reviewing the New Canoe Pursuit. For those of you that have followed me for a while, you know that I have worked at Jackson Kayak for over a decade and I've only recently quit or resigned from that position. I spent the last few years there as the brand manager of fishing and I learned a ton and really enjoyed my time there. But this is actually going to be one of the very first videos where I get to review a different brand's boat and I'm really excited about that. In fact, whenever I decided to move away from Jackson so that I could do this road trip angler a little more full time. The first company that I actually reached out to was New Canoe. I've always just been intrigued by how different they really are in the market space. And what I mean by that is they are a sit on top kayak and there's tons of sit on top kayaks out there, but they really do kind of hybridize that canoe and kayak platform. They've always had very open, very clean deck space and very riggable for fishing. In fact, this boat right here was one that I was intrigued by years and years ago. The boat's been out for over eight years. So it's been a very long time that this boat has been on the market, but I feel like it is still super relevant and it was built in such a way and designed in such a way that it has actually stood the test of time better than a lot of hole shapes and a lot of designs that are out there. In New Canoe's lineup, they separate all of their models into two categories, the performance category and the platform category. This particular boat falls in that performance category. It was designed to be able to paddle well and be fast, and we're gonna test that when we get it out on the water and let you know how it stacks up. The New Canoe Pursuit comes in at 13 feet, six inches long, 35 inches wide, and weighs 82 pounds, and that's pretty much the stripped down boat as you see it here. It also has a capacity of 500 pounds, but kind of unique on their website is that they list a self belling capacity, and that is at 350 pounds. Now what that means is that if you put 500 pounds in this boat, it's still gonna float you, no problem. However, the water's probably gonna be right at the top of those scuppers, not allowing any water that comes into the boat to drain out properly. So that 350 pound mark, the water should still drain out of the boat according to what they have listed on their website. Now this is a single person kayak. However, they do list an option on their website to be able to add a junior seat. And with that seat being fully trimmable, this might be a great boat to be able to take your kid out on with you. And if you don't wanna take a lot of gear, I think that would be very easy to do. It also lists that it has a max horsepower rating of 2.5 horsepower. They have the squared off stern and you can even put a gas outboard, something like the Honda two and a half horse or two horsepower. I'm not sure what that comes in at, but something like that would work great on the back and you would just need a tiller extension to be able to steer that motor. And I've seen a lot of people do that. What's really popular is the electric outboards that are available on the market today and specifically foot controlled steering with something like a Newport or a Torquedo motor. New Canoe also offers an accessory that can mount right to the track system and gives you this quick connect option to be able to put that stern mounted motor on there. And I actually have that as well. So we're gonna be testing that out as part of this review. This boat comes in at $1,599 in this setup that you see here. And again, you can add those motorization and pedal drive options. And of course that is gonna increase the price. Here on the bow, you can really see that it has this sharp entry and it just has a look of performance to it. You have the nice handle up front and there's also an accessory from New Canoe to be able to add an adapter for that bow mount motor. And there's some geometry here molded into the boat, which I'm assuming is gonna be for those electronics or that wiring to be able to go in there. And as you move back, you have a nice size bow hatch. And then you get this tub included with it, which I think is awesome. I just like having access to the inside of the boat where I can run wires, I can store stuff if needed, and even put my rods in if I wanna travel. As we move back, there are some little notches here, which I think are gonna allow you to be able to stage some rods out in front of you. But one of the really cool things up front here is this squared off section that has track lining both sides of it. Most of the time we have our gear and our tackle behind us, which can be hard to access. But this is a great use of this space up here. 
So I think they did a great job with that. And of course, having this track down each side. Coming back into the cockpit area, it's flattened out and it does have this traction pad in it as well. So it's gonna be a little quieter and a little grippier under your foot. And on either side, you actually have a rod tube that runs inside the boat. But you also have this track that runs the whole length of the cockpit area on both sides. Now that allows the seat to be trimmable forward and aft, but it also gives you more spaces to mount different accessories. On either side here, just back behind those rod tubes, you'll see this, it's a plastic material, but a little bit of a stretchy plastic material and a connection point for that as well. Now what this is, is you can actually put your paddle blade in and then that'll help hold that in place. And as this stretches, you can actually pull it and get it tighter if you want uh, on those hooks because it does have those rings throughout. You also have another attachment point on either side here if you need to leash something down or bungee something in. Now on either side of the gunnels here, I've actually already added a little piece of gear track from Yak Attack. This gear track does not come standard on the boat, so just keep that in mind as we take a look at this. You have a handle on each side and that makes it easy to just stand the boat up on its side if you're trying to carry this boat solo or dump water out of it. Just really whatever you're trying to do, it's nice to have those handles on each side of the boat. One of the other things that this boat kind of comes ready to do is to be able to add that lift system that comes in that quick connect package. It already has the pulley built in and the cleat to be able to pull that line and lock it in. And it already has the pad eyes. Now the seat, I can say just from sitting in this seat on the ground that this thing is super comfortable and I'm really excited to spend some time in it. I like also how easy it is to adjust the back. Instead of having a strap on each side, you just have a buckle that you can release and lower that seat all the way flat. So you don't have to loosen straps to lay it down, but also that gives you just one strap when you wanna tighten that seat back up against you. So very nice seat. It seems very well made and it is adjustable forward and aft. You don't, however, have a high-low position in this particular seat. And I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. Again, this falls in their performance category. And I think because of that, they wanted to keep it as simple as possible in this seating arrangement. And when it first came out, it did actually offer a high-low and a pivoting seat. But this seat is stuck in this position. It does not rotate at all. And it doesn't have high and low. And again, I don't think I'm gonna miss that. You can add those options to it, I believe. But I think in this situation, being a performance oriented whole shape, having that seat in kind of that fixed position as far as high and low. And also I think if you're gonna be paddling the boat, having a seat that turns and not having the ability to lock it, you're gonna lose a lot of your efficiency when you're paddling. Back here, you'll see some geometry molded into the boat that is for those rod butts. So if you're putting that rod tip into the tube up front, you've got a little bit of a spot here that you can kind of lock in. And as you take a look here at the tank wheel, you'll see that it's kind of this rectangular shape. Now when this boat was designed, there was no 16 by 16 inch Black Pack Pro. So most manufacturers design their tank wells to fit milk crates and the original Black Pack that came out, which was a 13 by 16. And the new 13 by 16 actually fits really nice here. And that's what I'm gonna be using back here. You again have track on both sides of the tank well, so it makes it really easy to strap that thing in place. And you have some flush mount rod holders on each side as well. So it's a great utilization of the space back here. Tons of room, so you can actually have that black pack and still get a battery back here if you want. You can also even put a battery if you want to slide the seat forward. So really anything you want to put back here is going to fit except for that 16 by 16 inch black pack. I really like the fact that you have access uh, to the stern as well. It's not a very big hatch. It's pretty standard. I think these are like eight inch hatches. So having that is great. And in the very back, you'll see the handle on the stern here, which pretty standard. Now I've already got that quick connect plate on here. This is designed to really kind of be universal and then you get the right plate to fit whatever motor or if you're using their pedal drive system. So really cool back here, but that's basically it. And I'm just now really excited to take this thing and get it on the water. So let's go do that. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna just paddle the boat to start with. 
because ultimately in that $15.99 price point, you're getting a paddle kayak. Yes, I know, I have a GoPro on my head. I probably have the seat trimmed a little far forward, but one of the things that, you know, in a paddle kayak that I've noticed right off the bat that kind of missing is my foot braces. However, in the floor, there are some obvious little inventions. You can see those little guys right there and right there. And I'm guessing that's to help kind of lock in your heels because that is helping. And that just helps you engage your core because when you're paddling, you know, you're not really doing this with your arms as much as when you want to kind of put it in at your feet and twist your body back to your hip. A lot of times you can actually follow the paddle blade with your eyes or your head, you know, and rotate that torso, your upper body. And that kind of helps you get used to that. But part of that is you're engaging your core. So having those foot braces can really help with that so that you're less tired at the end of the day. So I am kind of missing that, but I understand why they're not here. There are rod tubes that allow you to put your rods down each side of the boat, as we mentioned in the features. So if you had your rods there, they would kind of be in the way. Now with this track system, I do think it would be pretty easy to come up with a way to put some foot braces if you were gonna be paddling this boat a lot. Well, we're back home, obviously off the water. I left the boat set up as I had it when I was fishing out of it. I'm gonna do a complete walkthrough video showing you guys how I set this boat up and how I rigged it. So be sure to look out for that video. I'll leave a link in the description once that video is released. But I wanna just share my final thoughts of the new canoe pursuit. And I can tell you, I'm actually really, really happy with this boat. It performed great. And I'm just gonna go through category by category to talk about each one and what I thought about the boat. First thing I wanna talk about is stability. It is 35 inches wide, as I mentioned, and 13 feet, six inches long. And this boat is designed to be a performance-oriented boat. And I can tell you that I was perfectly stable. The boat feels, you know, pretty stable. I put all my weight on one side. You can see the boat's leaning pretty good now. So there's a little bit of rock to the boat, but the secondary stability is just there. So yeah, I mean, I feel plenty stable in this. Being able to stand sight fish from this boat would be no issue. It does have what I would say is a little bit more uh, secondary stability than primary stability, meaning as soon as you step on the boat, yes, there's a little bit of rock in the hole. Not much at all, and I'm not saying that it is at all unstable, but you can kind of let all your weight go to one side and find that point where the boat is gonna lock in. So I was able to do that, stand up, put all my weight on one foot, put all my weight on the other foot, move around in the boat, get up, sit down, grab my gear from behind me. Felt plenty stable, even in a little bit of choppy conditions out there. So stability for me was right where I think it should be and it felt very, very comfortable. I wanna talk about speed. It paddled really nice, it had decent glide, and it tracked very straight. And I was able to get it up to speed pretty quickly and maintain that three mile per hour range, which is a very comfortable paddle for me. So I'm just gonna make a little loop here and just see, you know, what kind of speeds we're seeing with a pretty easy cadence. I don't really have anything to compare this to, but typically I like to be paddling somewhere around that three mile per hour range at a comfortable pace comfortable paddling pace, something I can keep up most of the day. A little bit of wind out here, no current. I'm in open water. Just went over a log, boat's pretty shallow. Yeah, I'm right at three miles an hour right now. I also wanna talk about speed with the Torquedo 1103. Now that's the only motor that I've tried on this boat so far, but being able to compare it to other boats that I've had the Torquedo on, this boat is what I would say on the faster end of all the boats that I've tested with the Torquedo 1103. You got my Lowrance, Graf, batteries, Torquedo, full black pack. I'm only running with three rods right now, but other than that, pretty much everything that I would wanna bring except for maybe some food and I'm at 6.3 miles per hour. Now I feel like I could be a little further up on this boat but I don't really have the room to steer and that made a difference just moving to there. I'm at 6.5 so right off the bat this is you know a faster boat with the Torquedo 1103. Most boats that are getting in that 6.5 range are typically over that 13 foot 
mark. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I want to talk about maneuverability, and I'm going to cover this again with the motor setup and from a paddling standpoint. So this is a 13 and a half foot long boat. It doesn't have a lot of rocker to the, to the bottom of the boat, meaning the boat is pretty flat. If you set it on the ground, both the bow and the stern are pretty much going to be touching. So when you go to turn, you've got that whole entire length of the boat touching the water. Well, it's not too bad to be a 13 and a half foot boat. turns decently. What I was very curious about, however, was whether or not this quick connect system from New Canoe was going to allow the motor to turn far enough to be able to get the boat to kind of turn within its own length, keeping that circle literally as tight as possible. I mean, this is pretty tight. I don't think I'm quite turning in the length, but I'm pretty close. Like I'm really close. So for maneuverability overall, it does exactly what I expected it to do. It takes a couple more paddle strokes. It's not gonna spin as well as a 10 foot boat does, but at 13 and a half feet, it maneuvers great. It's responsive and that motor with that quick connect system actually turns the boat in a pretty tight circle. Let's talk storage now. When I went through the features of the boat, I showed you guys the big hatch that you have up front in that storage bin. And it does allow you to take some extra gear and have some places to store things. Other than that, the boat is really just a wide open cockpit or a wide open space that you can put really anything anywhere. But I really do like the squared off kind of front tank wheel, if you will. And I have plans for that. I'm gonna try to rig up a battery box using the new short stack that Yak Attack is coming out with. I don't have it yet. And I'll probably do a video of that once I get it all rigged. But doing some measurements, I think that 13 by 13 is gonna fit up there and I'm planning to rig up a battery setup. I'll talk about that more in the rigging video. And it fits the 13 by 16 black pack well. So overall, the storage is pretty good. I like the amount of storage you have up front in that front, front hatch. The back hatch is smaller, but it's what you need to get into the boat if you're doing any rigging. And you could put a few small items back there if you were trying to do a multi-day trip out of this boat. I found this seat to be very, very comfortable. Now I know they've went through some different iterations of their seat, especially since this boat has been out for over eight years, but this seat was super comfortable. It doesn't have a lot of lumbar, but I didn't feel like I was missing that. I think it's because the seat is kind of reclined a little bit and rounded down here on the front of the legs. It just felt nice. Also, the boat felt very comfortable to stand in. You've got this nice flat floor. Of course, there's some cutouts in it, but I didn't find that my feet were you know, sinking into those cutouts. If I was fishing barefoot, maybe that would have been an issue, but I really do like that it comes with that traction pad. But I felt like there was tons of room in the boat too, which I think also added to the comfort. You'll see I've got these rods rigged on the side. I've got that quick connect foot control steering in there and my paddle on the side. Everything had a place and I felt like I still had tons of room and nothing was like crowding me. So that added to the comfort actually. One of the main things when you're looking for a fishing kayak is fishability. Am I gonna be able to make cast and get to my tackle and rig the things that I wanna rig on the boat? I spent a little bit of time rigging this thing in the driveway before I took it to the water. And the cool thing about the rigging part of it was I really didn't drill any holes in the boat except for adding a couple of small pieces of track. Everything just mounted onto the existing track or the existing inserts that the boat came with. So I was really able to dial it in to my fishing style and get everything where I wanted it and out of the way. And with the stability of the boat and the room that it has in the cockpit, I feel like this is gonna be the perfect boat for me, especially when I wanna hit the flats and sight fish redfish. It's also gonna be a great boat to take out on the lake. And if you wanna rig it up for your tournament rig, I think it would be great for that as well because of how much space it has and the ability to rig it however you want pretty easily without having to drill any holes into the hole. Let's talk about value. Coming in at $15.99, I feel like it's actually a great value. I mean, you're getting a lot of boat for that amount of money. You've got tracks already installed throughout in inserts. You've got a nice hatch up front that comes with that hatch bin, so you don't have to buy that as an accessory. 
You've got the traction pad kit. Again, you don't have to buy that. It's already installed on the boat. You've got a really comfortable seat that trims, which is so important. In fact, I would rather a seat trim forward and aft than have a high low seat position. And I really didn't even miss the high seat position in this boat. And you've got the ability to add a lot of different motorization or motor options. I feel like a lot of value in this boat, and honestly, it's probably priced a little bit better even than a lot of other boats that are in the market. The only thing I could say negative about the entire boat, and really to me, it wasn't a negative at all. In fact, it didn't bother me one bit, but with all the weight that I had in the stern of the boat, the weight of myself, the weight of the black pack full of gear, and the weight of the Torquedo 1103 on the stern, I did notice that water was sitting right at the top of those rear scuppers. And occasionally when I would stand up or move around, water would come in through those scuppers and run to the back of the tank well. When I got off the water, there was a little tiny bit of water sitting in that tank well area. It doesn't really bother me because my black pack's up off the bottom a little bit and I didn't have anything in there that I was worried about getting wet. I'm in a kayak, everything is designed to get wet. So that did not bother me, but just keep in mind at 230 pounds with a full load of gear and the weight of that Torquedo and battery on the back that I did see a little bit of water coming up in those rear scuppers only when I was moving around a bit. It does come with scupper plugs, which is pretty awesome. I never use scupper plugs because if you take water in, you have to remember to pull those scupper plugs out in order for the boat to drain. So I typically just leave those out. I probably could put those in in the back, however, and that would prevent any water from getting in the hole at all. But I would then have to take them out for that water to drain. So if that's a negative, that is really the only thing that I would point out that I noticed from the amount of weight that I had in the kayak. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that full walkthrough of how I set up my new canoe pursuit. As always, thanks for watching.